Hey everybody, welcome to Mammoth Interactive's YouTube channel. First of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. And remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon, instead we sell our digital courses down below. And every single dollar that we get from the products you buy below goes into making more content. The best way to help out this channel and Mammoth Interactive is to subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. Get thousands of hours and hundreds of courses for a low, low price down below. We have a monthly option and a yearly option. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the video. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture we are doing a project overview talking about the project that we're going to build coming up building and selling NFTs with Metaplex Candy Machine. We're going to learn how to clone and install Metaplex and its required software, how to create and use a wallet with the Solana command line interface, how to set up a DevNet wallet and how to get sole cryptocurrency funds from a faucet. We're then going to configure our project for Candy Machine and prepare our NFT assets. Then we can upload our assets and create a Candy Machine. After that, we can verify the upload and mint tokens with the Candy Machine. Then we can build a website for users to mint NFTs via the website. Remember, all the source code is provided for every single lecture in the course. You can find it at the end of each section. So let's get started with this project in the next lecture. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're discussing what is brew, short for home brew. Note that homebrew is only for Mac or Linux, so you don't need brew on Windows. The official website for homebrew is brew.sh. Here you can read more about Brew and its documentation. Homebrew is the missing package manager for Mac OS and Linux. Homebrew allows you to install the tools that Apple doesn't have or Linux doesn't have on its operating system. So you can install extra packages. You can install files with Homebrew, install tools with Homebrew like Git, so Homebrew is a very popular package that is used to install other packages quite easily for Mac or Linux. So that is the official Brew webpage. Brew is the easiest and most flexible way to install the Unix tools that Apple didn't include with Mac OS and that Linux doesn't include by default. You can also install software not packaged for Linux without requiring sudo. To read more about the installation, you can go to docs.brew.sh slash installation. This is the official website for Homebrew and it discusses requirements and installation details. If you have any questions, hop over to the Homebrew GitHub. Over there, you can see different issues that developers are having, questions, bugs, and of course, search up your questions online as well. So that is Brew. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're learning how to install Brew on a Mac computer. Note that Homebrew is compatible with any Apple computer, whether it is an Intel chip or an M1 chip. You can install Brew on Mac or Linux by following the instructions at brew.sh, the official website for Homebrew. Here on the homepage of the Homebrew website, there is a command that you can use to install Homebrew. You just have to hit the copy icon or copy this command manually. Then paste the command into a macOS terminal or a Linux terminal. So you open up the terminal application on your computer. This is an application that is included by default on every Mac computer. So it's included in your applications. You just have to search for terminal. Then in that terminal, you want to paste in the command. This command is using bash and it's going to run a curl command. Here it is going to access at GitHub Homebrew and it's using an install script. So this is the installation script for Homebrew. Then hit enter and here you may have to pass in your computer password because this homebrew is going to install globally on the computer. So you have to 
give administrator permission for that installation. So enter in the password for your computer and then hit enter. If the password is correct, you'll see the message this script will install homebrew and its folders. So there are several folders that make up homebrew. Press return to continue or any other key to abort. So hit enter to continue. This is going to start the download and installation process for Homebrew, and it shouldn't take very long. So it's pulling Homebrew from GitHub. You should see a message, installation successful. Homebrew has enabled anonymous aggregate formulae and cask analytics. Homebrew is run entirely by volunteers. The next steps that you can take are to add Homebrew to your path. So you can run the following two commands, which you can just copy all in one and paste them in. This will allow you to access Homebrew via its keyword brew. So if you type in brew now in any terminal, you should see a list of examples of what you can do with brew. And this will work even if you create a new terminal. If you're having issues with accessing brew in this terminal or a new terminal window, then search up your problem online. Make sure also that you added homebrew to your environment variables with these two lines. These two lines enable you to use the brew keyword. All right, so now you have brew installed. You can check your version of brew with brew dash dash version. Currently, I'm using brew 3.4.1. And just like that, you can install homebrew on Mac and Linux. The command is the same. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're discussing what is Git. The official website for Git is git-scm.com. Here you can read more about Git. Git is a free and open source distributed version control system. Free and open source means that you can see all the code behind Git. It's being continually improved and developed over time by developers in the community. So if you wanted to, you could suggest an improvement or an update to Git. It is a version control system, so it helps to track versions of your project over time. And Git is very popular, used from small to large projects. As a software developer, regardless of the type of development, you need to know Git. And luckily, Git is easy to learn and they have a lot of documentation. Some of the advantages of Git and some of the features, for example, branching and merging. Git allows you to have multiple local branches with different versions of your project. So you can have version one and then have a separate version, perhaps with a new feature, and then you could merge the two versions together when you're happy with them. Git is fast. With Git, operations are performed locally on your computer, so there's a high speed advantage. You can see all the statistics on the official Git website. Git is also distributed. Instead of doing a checkout of your current code, you do a clone of an entire repository. There are multiple backups, so you won't lose your code. You can use any workflow with Git because it has a distributed nature and a branching system. As well, there is data assurance. The data model that Git uses ensures the cryptographic integrity of your project. So you can get the exact bits that you put in. Also, as long as you make a change, you can't change the history. So you can assure that your data won't be tampered with. Git has a staging area or an index where commits can be formatted and reviewed before completion. So before you submit your update to your code or update to your project, you can put it in a temporary holding area and then you can finally submit it when you're ready. Git is free and open source. So it is a free software. All right, so that is the official web page for Git. Again, you can read more about it at git-scm.com slash about. Join me coming up next, we'll talk about how to install Git. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to learn how to install Git on Mac. 
For the installer, go to the website git s cm.com, the official web page for Git, slash downloads. So this is the downloads tab on the official website. Here you have several options for downloading Git on macOS, Windows, and Linux, commonly known as Unix as well. Then you can select your download from any button, such as on Mac OS, if you have a Mac computer. This will work regardless of the chip you have, Intel or M1. There are several options for installing Git on Mac OS. Number one with Homebrew, another option Mac Ports, another option is with Xcode, another option is with a binary installer. You can build from the source or install another one, Git GUI, that's an extra one. So the most easy way to install Git is with Homebrew. So previously we installed Homebrew. Brew is available for Mac or Linux. So if you have Brew, you can then use it to install other packages like Git. This is a very common function, one of the primary functions for Brew. So as long as you have Brew, you can use this command, Brew install Git. So copy this command, then open the terminal application on your computer. The terminal application comes with every Mac computer. So Just pop open the terminal and paste in the command brew install git. You can also type it in. This command means that we are using brew to do something. We're using the command install, which means we're using brew to install something. And then we pass in git because git is the package that we are installing. So in total, we're going to install git. Hit enter to execute the command and the installation will begin. Now, in my case, the installation already happened. So I get the message that Git 2.35.1 is already installed and up to date. If you want, you can reinstall with the command reinstall. So I can try brew reinstall Git and hit enter. This is going to be likely what you'll see if you are installing Git for the first time. So you'll see that we are downloading, installing, And there should be a summary that you now have Git at this location on your computer. All right, so you should see that the completions and functions have been installed to a location on your computer. If you get this success message, that means you have Git available now. If you get an error message, then read the error message carefully and search it up online so that you can find a solution. If you get any prompts to do any extra steps, then follow those prompts to do those steps. Now you should be able to access git with the command git. So if I type in git into this terminal or any terminal, then I am going to see options or suggestions for what I can do with git. If you don't see git available, then likely you didn't install correctly. Also, you may have to add git to your path variables if you still can't use it in this terminal or a new terminal. And another option is to try restarting your computer or restarting the terminal app to make sure that the changes have been implemented. Sometimes it takes a refresh for the changes to your computer to be implemented. Then you can check your Git version with Git dash dash version. So I'm using version 2.35.1. And that is how you can install Git on Mac. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to update Git on Mac. So to update Git on Mac, we are going to first call brew install Git. This command is going to install the latest version of Git. But if you have a previous version of Git already, then your computer will have both versions of Git. And by default, you are going to still use the old version and you can check with git dash dash version and you'll see Apple at the end here. You'll see git version 2.35.1 followed by Apple. So I don't see it because this is the latest version. But if you have two versions and you just installed a second one, then if you try to use git, you're still by default using the old version. So if you want to use the new version, which we just installed with this command, 
then you have to add that version as your path variable. So you have to add it to your environment variables on your computer. For that, you are going to use the following command, export path equals user slash local slash bin path. This means we are going to take our brew installation path, the link or location of, brew, of git rather that we just installed, and we're going to add it to our path variables, which means instead of using the old version of git when we use the git keyword, we're now going to use the new version of git when we use the git keyword. So you hit enter and now the new version of git is added to our path variables, which means when we use the command git, we're no longer using the old version, we're using the new version. So the key here is to install git again, which will give you two versions, and then to add the new version to your path with this command. And this command is going to take whatever you just installed and add it to your path variables. So this updates the git variable. So now in your terminal, when you use git, that variable has been updated. That variable no longer points to the old version. It now points to the new version. So you only have to do this if you're updating git. If you had a version of git and then you want a new version of git. So that is how you can update git on Mac. Then you can check your version again with the same command git dash dash version. And you should see git version 2.35.1, for example, without any Apple text after it. All right, so I can show you an example of what this would look like. Here, you would use brew install git and check the version, and you would see an old version like 2.32.0 Apple git 132, because if you install git twice with a new version, then you'll have the old version and you'll have the new version. So if you want to change your variable to point to the new version instead of the old version, you have to add this command, which is going to update the environment variable git, which is a variable on your computer. It's going to update it to no longer be the old version. It's going to update the variable to be the new version, which you just installed. So this is a summary of what you should see in your terminal. Hello everyone and welcome back to our course. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to install Git on Windows. Go to the website git-scm.com and click on the Downloads tab. Here you can download the latest version of Git for your computer, Mac, Windows or Linux. For Windows, click on the Windows installer. This will take you to the Windows installation page. You want to download the installer for your version of Windows. So you can search in the toolbar for bit version and find out what bit version your computer is. Likely it is a 64 bit because 32 bit is outdated. But regardless, choose the correct installer for your computer type. You can click to download that version of Git for Windows. This is going to download a git followed by the version number, followed by the bit version, which on my computer is a 64-bit, .exe file. So save the file and then open the file. I've opened the file and I get the question, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? You want to select yes because the app will make changes to your computer in the sense that it will install Git to the computer. Next, read through the public license for Git and hit install. This is going to remove any previous versions of Git that might be on your computer and install the latest version. So just wait a moment for the installation to complete. You have to extract the files required for Git to work. And you can see the location where Git will be on your computer. Next, you'll see this message completing the Git setup wizard. Setup has finished installing Git on your computer. The application may be launched by selecting the installed shortcuts. You can then hit finish. And now you have Git 
on your Windows computer. To verify that you do have Git, go into your search bar and search for the command prompt application. Here you can interface with your operating system. So if you type in Git, you should now see prompts for suggestions of what you can do with Git. If you don't see this, then read the error message that you have. You may have to install Git again. You may have to add Git as an environment variable to your computer. You may have to restart your terminal or restart your computer. Otherwise, you should be able to see Git options when you use the command Git. Typically, Git will be added to your environment variables by default. This means that you can now access Git as a variable and you can perform commands. For example, you can check what version of Git you have. If you can see your Git version, that means you have Git successfully installed on Windows. Hello everyone, in this lecture we are discussing what is Yarn. Yarn is a package manager commonly used for projects from small to large on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Yarn allows you to use and share code with other developers from around the world so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can use code that other developers have made and published. In this way, Yarn is similar to NPM because it allows you to use packages quickly, securely, and reliably. You can use other developers' tools when developing your own software. Code is shared through a package which contains the code and contains a file called package.json which describes the package. You can see the usage for Yarn at the official Yarn website, yarnpkg.com, which is short for yarnpackage.com. You can read the documentation and check out the use cases. For example, here are the most common commands. Accessing commands, starting a new project. This is similar to starting a new NPM project. Installing dependencies. So you can build a project and then use other tools in the project. So that way you don't have to reinvent the wheel. For example, if you're building a Web3 project, you don't want to reinvent Web3. You might want to use the Web3 package so that way you can connect to the blockchain a lot more easily than having to write all of that yourself from scratch. You can add dependencies in different categories. You can upgrade and remove dependencies and upgrade Yarn. These are the most common commands, but of course, Yarn has many different commands available. If you have any questions when using Yarn or installing Yarn, go to the official GitHub page for Yarn. So you just go to github.com and search up Yarn. Here you can read more about the documentation and you can see other questions that other developers are having. Join me coming up next, we'll talk about how to install Yarn. Hello everyone, in this lecture we are going to learn how to install Yarn on Mac. For that, join me in the terminal application on your computer. We're going to use the following command, starting with sudo. Sudo means we are going to run a command as an administrator. Because if you want to install a package globally to be used everywhere on your computer, you have to run the command as an administrator to give administrator permissions for that global change. On Mac, to run a command as an administrator, you start the command with the keyword sudo. Then you can use the command npm. This means we're using the Node Package Manager, which we previously installed because it comes with Node. They're bundled together. And we're going to use this Package Manager to install a package. So that is the package we're using currently. And we're going to use the command install, which means we're using npm to install something. Then I'm going to add the global flag. You could also just use g. And this means that we're going to install a package globally, which means it can be used in any folder on our computer. After that, I'm going to write the keyword yarn because this is the package we are installing. We're using npm to install yarn. Then hit enter and you'll be prompted for your computer password. You'll be prompted for your password anytime you use sudo because if you want to run a command as an administrator, you have to give your password to verify that you are the administrator. So type in the password to your computer. Then you should get the message changed one package or added one package and perhaps audited two packages. As long as you don't see an error message here, then you are good. 
So now this tells me we have installed yarn. If you get any prompts to do any extra steps like add yarn to your path variables, then follow those prompts and do what they say. Because for example, you have to typically add packages to your environment variables with an extra command so that you can use the variable for yarn like so. So once you follow all the recommended steps, if there are any, then try using yarn by typing in the command yarn. You should see a success message. You can also verify that you can use yarn in a new terminal window which verifies that it can be used globally and that it's been added to your environment variables which can also be done by default typically if you install a package but sometimes has to be done manually. You can check what version of yarn you have with yarn dash dash version. In this example I'm using version 3.2.0 and if you want to update yarn to the latest version, then you can use the following command, yarn, which means that we are using the yarn package to do something. Then we're going to call set, which means we're going to use the set command to set something. I'm going to be setting the version, which means I'm going to change my yarn version. Then I'm going to use the command stable, which means I'm going to set my version of yarn to the latest stable release, which means it's the latest release that is working. So you can hit enter and you should get the message saving the new release in a location. And if you get asked to update the environment variable, then do that. You can check your yarn version again and it should be the new version in this terminal window and in any other new terminal windows. If you don't see the new version, then you can try rerunning the command to set yarn as an environment variable. You can also try restarting your terminal application because sometimes when you make an installation or an update, you have to refresh your terminal to make sure the changes get installed. And another option to try is try restarting your computer again to make sure that the changes can be applied and refreshed. Otherwise, that is how you can install yarn. So now you can use the yarn command, which is very commonly used typically for installing packages. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to learn how to install Yarn on a Windows computer. The preferred way to manage Yarn is through CorePack. CorePack is a new binary that is included with Node.js, starting with Node.js 16.10. So you will need Node 16.10 or higher for this installation. CorePack will act as an intermediary between you the developer and yarn and core pack allows us to use different package manager versions so we don't have to check in the yarn binary anymore so we need to open our command prompt application however we have to open it as an administrator so search for the command prompt and then right click on it and select run as administrator you'll get the question do you want to allow the app to make changes to the device you select yes because we're going to be using the terminal to make changes to the computer so you should see that you're in Windows and you're in your system core pack is included with all node.js installs but you have to opt in to using core pack so to enable core pack use the command core pack enable in your terminal next up we can now use yarn. If you have an older version of Node that doesn't have CorePack, then you can install CorePack via NPM. So now you have access to yarn. You can check out the yarn command with the command yarn. You should see your version of yarn and an upgrade if required. So in our case, yarn is up to date. So now CorePack is keeping yarn up to date. And you can check your yarn version with yarn dash V as well. So now you can use yarn commands like initiating a project or installing and more. So that is how you can get yarn the latest version on Windows. So this is using, however, yarn version one. But what if we want to upgrade yarn? For example, the current version is 3.5 around there. So if we want to upgrade yarn to the latest version, then we can use the command yarn set version stable. 
This is going to set the version of yarn to the latest stable version, which means the latest version that doesn't have any bugs in it. So you should see this retrieval message and then saving the new release. So now if you type in yarn, well, let's see here. We can see we get migrating from yarn one, automatically enabling the compatibility node. So if we check our version of yarn this time, we have 3.2.0. So you can install yarn via core pack as we just saw, but then you also have to set the yarn version that you want to use. Likely you want to use the latest version because it is the one with the newest features and the fewest bugs. So that is how you can install yarn and update it on Windows. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this course. If you want to watch the rest of the course, the link is down below. Not only will you get the access to this course, but you'll get access to a lot of other courses in a huge bundle. And it's on sale today. So buy it before the sale ends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.